Hey, 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 Nikki Brown here, no matter where you are and what part of the world you are in, I hope that you are having a good, good day. So I've been achieving some milestones and I haven't, I hadn't realized it really until recently, like within the last two, three weeks. I'm like, hmm. So today, about two weeks ago, I realized that I've been on my, the, the medit well I've been on a spiritual journey since at least 2013 so this is my 10 year spiritual journey right anniversary and then I realized I moved to North Carolina in 2003 so it's been 20 years since I celebrated holidays I really didn't celebrate them before that but I was still kind of celebrating Christmas and before I moved to North Carolina, I got rid of my Christmas tree and I have not celebrated holidays since. Um, like if somebody's having something, I'll participate, but I don't go out of my way to do anything special for these days. It's just another day. And um, what was the other one? Well, the past two years so uh april for those of you who know april 2021 was april 7th of 2021 um i had an injury a uh, work-related injury and i was out of work for over a year and um, so I, I went on a healing journey. And so that started in 2021. So I've now been on my healing journey um, for the past two years. So um, I was a vegan for a year. So from November of 2021 until November of 2022, I was strictly a vegan. But since then, I have started back eating fish which I need to go back to veganism and I'm slowly but surely waning my way um, I haven't had any fish this week today is Monday Monday September 25th <clears throat> Um, so yeah, have not, um, had any fish in a little over a week, I guess it's been, I don't remember. I know all weekend I've just been eating like vegetables and like, I did have some tofu as like a meat substitute. I had a veggie burger, um, but I have been proud of myself cause I have not had any fish um so i'm slowly but surely like i said weaning my way and um this is great it's a great feeling to be on a spiritual journey be on a healing journey and just be in a better place mentally emotionally physically spiritually and all of the things and um I've come a long way and it's exciting and it's exciting when I can help other people. So this is one of the reasons why I decided to share this because there is, um, I don't really like the word hope, but there's hope. So, you know, whoever inspires you, if I inspire you, I give thanks to you for allowing me to inspire you. I humbly give thanks to you. And, um, I'm looking forward to many, many more. So I just decided to share that. And again, I hope that this is helpful to you. Um, I am a certified master life coach. I am a, um, a yogi. So basically a yoga instructor, Hatha yoga. I, uh, offer Reiki 
which is energy healing. And um, I can I can do readings. So if you want a tarot card reading um, or any other kind of reading, um, I'm here for you. Again, you know, goal is to be an inspiration and to influence, even if it's just to influence one person, each one teach one. And so I'm reaching out to uh, willfully help someone who may be experiencing something similar. I have gone no contact from my relatives and um, the people I called friends. Um, because sometimes you know who's really for you, but because you don't want to be alone or because you want to have, you know, interactions or people say you're supposed to have these interactions or you've known someone for a long time, um, you kind of keep contact with people. But you may have also known that they kicked your back in because as much as they may kick your back in, there's always somebody who they know who's going to tell you. Whether it's directly or indirectly, people always tell. <laughs> or they sometimes tell on themselves um, with the things that they say. And so you know that, you know, they don't have the best intentions for you or that they've been gossiping about you or they don't really like you. Um, they're trying to manipulate you, use you, whatever it is, right? So, um it's good to be around people who serve a good purpose in your life and the life of those you're here to help or that we are here to help. And so that's the goal, to be around more like-minded people um, who have good intentions always. Which is not always easy. Um, and you may find yourself being alone a lot of times because again, a lot of people are not of that mindset and, and it's not easy to connect with people who are of that mindset, truly and genuinely of that mindset, who are more interested in discussing ideas and creating strategies to build and be in a better place mentally, emotionally, financially. Um, not too many people are on that page, right? Um... And so, to connect with like-minded people, again, genuinely like-minded people, not people who are pretending to your face and, and not that way behind your back. Um, because then, you know, for those who are really not like that, if you call them out on something, they get upset, they become offended. And then they'll start to attack you or name call you and things of that nature. So you know that this person is not truly for you. And you know, a lot of times I, I, I remind people of the poem, people come into your life for a season, a reason, or a lifetime, right? And sometimes we try to turn seasonal people into lifetime people when we were only meant to learn a lesson from this person and move on, right? We did not learn the lesson. And so sometimes if you don't learn the lesson the first time, the lesson repeats itself with that same person or another person who has similar energy. I also remind people of Maya Angelou's quotes. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. <laughs> not the second time. Or the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth time. Now, keep in mind, you can accept people for who they are the way that they are. You just have to know and understand that's how they are and not think that they're going to change. Don't think that you're such a good person, that your love is so significant and so powerful that they are going to change. No, people are who they are. And if do it, they do it to someone else, they will do it to you. Right? There's another quote that says, if somebody's going to gossip about somebody else, they're going to gossip about you. And it doesn't feel good, right? Um, the, the movie and the book, Their Eyes Were Watching God. I had to read that book in college. Their Eyes Were Watching God. Great, great book. And um, 
They created a movie starring Halle Berry. It's a Zora Neale Hurston book. Hold on. Their eyes were watching God. She was such a profound author, right? There's no book more important to me than this one, said Alice Walker. I'm reading the back. First published in 1937, Their Eyes Were Watching God is Zora Neale Hurston's most acclaimed novel. A classic of black literature, it tells with haunting sympathy and piercing immediate, immediacy the story of Janie Crawford's evolving selfhood through three marriages. Fair-skinned, long-haired, dreamy as a child, Janie grows up expecting better treatment than she gets until she meets Tea Cake. A younger man who engages her heart and spirit in equal measure and gives her the chance to enjoy life without being one man's mule or another man's adornment. It is a tribute to the author's wisdom that though her story does not end happily, it does draw to satisfying conclusion. Janie is one of black women, is one black woman who doesn't have to live lost in sorrow, bitterness, fear, or foolish romantic dreams. For Janie and the reader have learned two things everybody's got to do for themselves. They got to go to God and they got to find out about living for themselves. And a lot of people don't go on that journey. A lot of people just live in the footsteps of someone else or they live for someone else, for someone else's dreams, expectations, right? What their parents want them to do, what their parents told them to do, what their parents made them do. They don't live for themselves um, because in the book, her grandmother makes her marry a man, an old man, like she's like 17, if I'm not mistaken. And her grandmother made her marry like a 60 or 70 year old man to show that she can have security and be taken care of. And at first he kind of coddles her, but then he expects her to start working in the field. And like they said, he treats her like a mule. Um, and then she eventually meets like the love of her life. And um, she really realizes what it's like to enjoy life. Um... But because people see how happy she is, they gossip, right? The town that she lives in, she lives in a small town. Um, you know, they see her going on dates. And so they gossip about her. And again, this can be hurtful. And we're all guilty of it or we all have been guilty of it at some point in our lives. And again, it's challenging to overcome that when it's something that you've done your whole life and so these are some of the things that you know with help from like-minded people we can all work towards so i just wanted to share that and as always i love y'all and i will you all the best and until next time mwah.